All right, and welcome back to another session of Pellet Tech 101. In today's video, we're gonna be covering vacuum switches and pressure switches. What's the difference between the two? How do we properly install them? Best ways to troubleshoot or run diagnostics if we're running into an issue. So our information today is gonna to be focused on these switches used in pellet and corn stove models. Other HVAC appliances or other appliances in general that may use a switch like this may have a totally different configuration. So always important to follow your manufacturer's outlines, your owner's manual. And uh, again, the video here is just designed as a helpful guide tool. So with that said, let's dive in. All right, so we're just gonna start this off with one of the most common questions that we get. Do I have a vacuum switch or do I have a pressure switch in my pellet or corn appliance? So if you have a vacuum switch, the hose coming from the switch is going to go either into the firebox, the feeder system, or the fuel hopper. If my stove has a pressure switch, the hose coming from the switch is either gonna go into the combustion blower housing or the exhaust tailpipe. All right, now if I have a vacuum switch, my hose is gonna go on the negative port. As vacuum is applied, this port closes. If I have a pressure switch, my hose is gonna go on the positive port. When pressure is applied, it will close. Now most switches are gonna be designed where they can be either a vacuum switch or a pressure switch. So you'll see dual nozzles, you'll see a small plus sign engraved for the pressure side, and you will see a minus symbol engraved for the vacuum side of the switch. Now there are switches that are out there that will only have one nozzle and those switches are gonna be sold as either a pressure switch or a vacuum switch. All right, so we're just gonna jump into the electrical on these switches. So whether we have a pressure switch or we have a vacuum switch, our electrical configuration is gonna be the same. Both are designed to be normally open in pellet and corn burning appliances. So our electrical connection is gonna to go to the normally open or the NO spade, and then to our common spade. All right, so these two switches in particular are two of our most common replacements that are out there. And you will see with these, as you do with most others, that they will have engravings right here for the electrical. So right here, our spade on the right is gonna say NO, standing for normally open. Our spade right next to it says NC, standing for normally closed. And right here on the back, we have a C standing for common. Now, like I mentioned, with pellet and corn burning appliances, whether we have a pressure switch or a vacuum switch, we're gonna be on NO, normally open and our common. Now, the pellet head switch right here has the engraved writing as well, but just as a quick cheat guide, our top spade is going to be our common. Our middle spade is gonna be our normally closed, and our bottom spade will be our normally open. All right, now as you'll see, I have the multimeter out and I have this set to ohms. So should we need to do some troubleshooting or some diagnostics, this is how we do it. I'm gonna take one of the leads and I'm gonna put it on the, the C or the common spade. Now, if I take the other lead and I touch it to the NC, the normally closed spade, I should always see resistance. Even if I'm just seeing zeros, that still indicates resistance. Now, if I place that on the NO or the normally open spade, I should see nothing while the switch is at rest or not in use. Again, like I mentioned earlier, the NO spade is the spade that we're gonna be using for pellet and corn stove appliances, whether or not we have a pressure switch or a vacuum switch. So to do testing on the NO spade, what we're gonna do is we're going to attach the hose. So let's, let's say that we have a pressure switch in our stove. I'm going to place the hose on the plus nozzle or the pressure port. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to get my leads back in here. Try to balance those so they stay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a very light blow on the pressure end and I should see resistance if the switch is good. Great, now let's say that I have a vacuum switch in my stove. I'm going to place the hose on the negative or the vacuum port. Again, common spade and O spade. Try to have those hold. And I'm gonna do a gentle suck and I should see resistance if the switch is good. Just like that. So very quick, very easy way 
with a multimeter to do a diagnosis on the switch and determine whether or not that switch is good or bad. All right, so I kicked the multimeter out of the way and right now I have a brick in place that I'm gonna use as an example talking about installation. So oftentimes when we get a replacement vacuum switch or a pressure switch, it's going to be different than the original and may need some reconfiguration as we install this in the stove. So what we wanna do is we wanna install this vertically. So if this was the side wall of the stove, like this or like this. If we were gonna install it on the floor, like this or like this. If we're gonna install it at the top, just like that. What we want to avoid is we want to avoid what I call a horizontal mount or like a pancake mount. So we never want to have it installed like this or like this. For the diaphragm that's inside the switch to work correctly and be consistent, we always want to make sure that we have a vertical mount when we install the switch. All right, I just want to talk about the hose a little bit that goes to the vacuum slash pressure switch. So the hose is a very key component in making sure this safety device is working correctly. Over time, this hose can become brittle and have cracks or holes causing an issue with the vacuum or the pressure in our stove. So important to routinely inspect the hose. We always recommend that when you're replacing the switch that you go ahead and replace the hose as well. Now, when I am installing the hose on the switch, as mentioned earlier, the minus or the negative will be vacuum. I wanna make sure that hose is pushed all the way on that port. I wanna make sure there's no air gaps. Again, if we have a pressure switch, it's going to be the plus or the positive side right here. Same thing, all the way down and on there. Now with our pellet head switch right here, you see a small plus right here on this side for your pressure. Again, all the way down on there. On this side right here, the sticker was actually covering up the uh, minus a little bit. So I just peeled that sticker out of the way so that we can see that. And so just again, a little cheat right here. If you have a vacuum switch in your stove, this will be the correct side for that hose to mount. And lastly, whether we have a pressure switch or a vacuum switch in the stove, it is designed as a safety device and it's important that it is functioning correctly while the unit is in operation. Again, if there is an issue with the, the switch, whether it's faulty or whether it's tripped, it's going to shut off power to the auger feed motor and not allow that to run. So I showed you earlier how we can check the switch with a multimeter looking at resistance. From there, we can inspect the hose and make sure that it's in good condition. We don't have holes or breaks or cracks and that we have a secure connection on both ends. And at that point, we're looking at any areas in the stove or the venting where we may have air loss or air blockage. So in the stove, as we look at air loss, we're gonna be looking at things like the door gasket, the ash pan door gasket, the glass gasket, and the hopper gasket. We need to make sure that it is sealing tight all the way around. At that point, we can take a look at our combustion blower. That combustion blower motor should be running near line voltage on startup in order to lock in the switch or have it go from normally open into a closed position. As we're looking at air blockage, we are going to inspect things like the vent pipe and the stove for excessive ash accumulation. And we're also gonna be looking at things like the air intake and making sure there's no obstruction there. All right, and that is gonna do it for today's video. We hope that you found it helpful. If you have any questions, definitely leave us a comment down below. We're always here, always happy to help. We'll have links below for some of the most common vacuum switches and pressure switches that are out there, as well as a couple links in the video right here that you can click on if you are in need of a replacement. We again, thank you for joining us and coming back for another session of Pellet Tech 101, and we look forward to seeing you soon.